Hello my lovely ears and welcome to my channel Where Is The New Black. My name is Kat and this pick a card reading is going to focus on the relationship um, between you and your person, where things are at and yeah we're just going to see what comes through between you and them. Um, so I suspect that I'm going to get predominantly sort of romantic readings but um, do take what resonates if you're inquiring about a non-romantic connection. Um, as ever, be drawn to your stack. And so stack one here, we've got the Toth Tarot deck. Stack two, the Wildwood Tarot. Stack three, the Angel Tarot. And stack four, um, Legacy of the Divine. So just take a moment to be drawn to whichever tarot deck you feel um, resonant with in regards to your person. And I will see you on the other side. Hello my lovelies. So you are the guys that chose the Toth deck here and we're going to be looking at you versus them, you versus them. I'm going to start with your person. I'm being told to start with your person. This person feels like you've closed the door. I feel like there's an ending happened here. Yeah, spirit show me a closed door. There's no contact here. And I feel like you were the one that ended the contact. If that's not so, this is not your reading and do pick another pile is what I'm being told to tell you. Yeah, this is something to do with time as a factor here, something to do with time, but your person is the one that's predominantly in my mind's eye. I kind of, it feels like it's kind of glowing from behind the door is what I can see here in terms of your energy, but I'm being kind of drawn to, into your person space, which is feeling very... I don't know, uh, reflective is what I'm feeling to say first off the bat, sad, a little bit regretful but I can't, there's an understanding here as well though, there's an understanding, right, completion. Yeah, I'm feeling that this has closed. This has closed uh, down here. This could be a soul connection. But there's part of a cycle that's been closed. And I'm feeling like a karmic cycle has been closed. And this has been closed by ending communication or closing a door on something. On uh, this person. It feels like I had a lot of potential, this relationship is what I'm feeling to say. For most of you, I'm getting a romantic connection and that's what's coming through here. If not a romantic connection, it feels like it was a partnership or some kind of very close affiliation is what I'm getting. Like, yeah, uh, it could be even be family situation coming through here, but not for all of you. And that, that, is, that feels like a minimal number actually. Yeah, something's ended. We've got Valor at the bottom of the deck, the Seven of Wands. Yeah, there's been a, a withdrawal. I think that you've closed the door and I think that you've done it in order to protect something sacred within yourself that had to be maintained. It's almost like a choice between the connection being open to this person and you losing something fundamentally significant to yourself, fundamental to your inner core, to your heart space, to your clarity of mind, maybe even to your conscience. Yeah, it was, it's like um, being asked to select between um, your soul and uh, something else and it feel, or maybe this person or there's something here that has said, right, okay, now we have to be very protective of some light within yourself um, and therefore this had to be a closing down or, or an ending to communication or, yeah, it could just be because you feel it's wrong to keep it open. Ouch. Merlin is jumping on me with claws. He doesn't realise or appreciate how large he is these days. Oh, he's off again. He's off. So if you can work out how to open the door, it's yet to be something. Oh, well done. Well done. <laughs> Sorry. There is a little slow in the uptake sometimes. <laughs> Very proud. Right. 
your person is sad is reflecting is understanding though that this energy uh it feels kind of a nece necessary energy there there is a feeling of defeat though around your person and maybe um slight depression yeah there is a lot of sadness here for some of these people there's a minor amount of resentment as well ruin ten of swords so there's been some kind of betrayal or really messy scenario that's gone down here before this door has closed is what i'm getting and it may be that your person feels that you closing the door is a kind of betrayal um is is a very painful ending a very painful completion but it is a completion to a cycle of painful karma of really of, of a sense of being really screwed over this is one of the most like heinous heinous ten of swords in in pretty much multiple decks for me this is a very powerful energy that goes with this card and a fragmentation like broken glass whatever happened to you was sharp for some of you it was a tower moment is what i'm getting we've got the queen of discs at the bottom of the deck it could have knocked your sense of confidence health money um there could have been a domestic situation that was brought down in this situation or maybe you're married to this person is what i'm getting as well here um i feel like you've had to turn your back she does she is not facing the card and it's been hard um, because that Capricorn energy down there, I feel like it's been a slog. It's been hard to overcome this. But you've overcome it and, and now you're sitting in sovereign territory, which is really impressive from this to this. And I feel like time has passed here and time is a factor in this situation between the two of you. It could have been a long time. So Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo energy, specifically Capricorn with these cards. But what I'm getting is that there's been an endurance, there's been a putting a one foot in front of the other to recover from this horrifying nonsense. And I feel like your person is feeling, is aware, is aware that this is the energy that caused the completion. But they are feeling an energy of betrayal um, from this completion. Yeah. They can't help this. It's it's not like they're doing it on purpose. It's just like it's the, it's an ego response. Um, but it's it's their way of handling pain. A lot of these people I'm getting. Again, the seven of wands coming up. So something really needed to be guarded. Something really needed to be protected. And maybe it was to prevent a situation like this occurring again that there had to be a completion, a closed door being brought into this situation. And I feel like you've had to protect something very significant. Again, within yourself, it feels like we've got change at the bottom of the deck. This is enforcing a kind of transformation on your person is what I'm getting. They are going to have to be adaptable um, and I feel like this person could also have been juggling. They could have had a choice between you and another person is what's coming through as well for some of you. Playing one side against the middle, that's what I'm getting or playing both sides against the middle here. So maybe your person used this uh, or used another energy in order to make you feel betrayed or make you feel that it was a really, there was no real proper conclusion. There was, it was just so messy. There was a lot of um, words here is what I'm getting, like very, maybe lies as well. Uh, it's a sense of betrayal with the 10 and, you know, too many swords is like a hurricane of energy. That's what's giving me that speed that tower moment potentially for some of you here that you've had to be adaptable um and i feel like your person is having to be adaptable they, they are being forced to transform in some way strife so there's quite a lot of conflict i'm feeling within this person and in their space it's really a struggle at the moment is what I'm getting the night of disc at the bottom of the deck and there could be a lot of interruption around their their home space their health their money their work um, 
yeah, there could be a lot of anxiety uh, as well as what I'm getting here. Strong air energy coming through here as well as strong fire. And we've had a couple of earth uh, earth energies. I feel like um, you may have some kind of earth energy uh, that's strong with you. Uh, not for all of you, obviously, but I feel like this is... It's it's a real struggle to just to just stand still is what I'm getting a struggle to stand still right now because this horse isn't moving anywhere. Look, it's almost like a defended or defensive position with a particular knight as well. I feel like there's a lot of conflict around your person, or they're feeling the need to defend themselves, or they're feeling the need to try and deflect energy. Um, is what's going on here, and it could be that they feel under attack, or that there's a sense of uh, maybe they feel that you're annoyed or feeling combative towards them. I don't feel that though from your energy. This could be somebody else. This could be a third party that there's a combative energetic around this space. I feel like for a lot of your people, they are very internally conflicted. That's the energy that's coming through here with the night. Very internally conflicted about their physical space, about how to put themselves in a position where they feel better. Yeah, the Ace of Cups, they want a new beginning on an emotional level, um, but I feel like it's game over. It's It's been too long, the door's closed. I mean, I've seen cobwebs, Spirit is showing me cobwebs and stuff. They're like, yeah, and I'm being told, I'm being shown Miss Havisham from, oh, that comes through sometimes, it's so weird, um, from Charles Dickens, from Great Expectations. She was the, the lady that sat in her wedding dress for like years and years and the, cake went moldy and it was just all generally creepy um and yeah that, there's this feeling of kind of waiting till things mold or fester or and this is in your person's camp feels it feels pretty unhappy yeah just seeing cobwebs and stuff so th there's way there's there's a time that things have been left to kind of fester or not moved on or yeah oppression ten of wands again this give me like the sense of the this burden or this depression or this sense of feeling lacking in motivation like significantly lacking in motivation to take any active uh, effort towards things or and we've got success at the bottom, which is six of coins. And for me, this is this is saying that there wasn't enough giving. There were there was no giving into this situation. It was a burden to hold it. It was a burden to be with it. So the door had to be closed. In the grand scheme of things, this is a very spiritually led decision. Is what I'm feeling. It 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 offers uh, offers a way to release towards the light. Is what I'm getting to release towards a lighter, a brighter, a positive outlook. I'm seeing that doorway. It's sort of glowing around the edges. Um, the door's closed, but I can see that wherever you are, it's glowing. It feels. Um, like a, re a reclaiming of the spiritual self, reclaiming of the spiritual light, a lightening, a lightening of the load. Um, yeah, I'm feeling like for a lot of you, you held the door open for a long time. This door feels very like, <laughs> Spirit's showing me some like enormous vault door that's like made of pure metal. Like there's giant Italian doors in those giant Italian churches where you'd need to kind of lean your whole body weight in order to keep it open. Um, and I feel like maybe you did this for some time. Oh, but it's too uncomfortable. It's too painful. It's that there was nothing from this person who now is sad that the door's closed. There was no assistance. There was no help. There was no meeting in the middle. This person is kind of stuck with one foot in two realms is what I'm getting. But they now no longer have access to your realm. Even though energetically I feel there's a part of them constantly calling towards the light behind the door <sighs> so weird weird fortune 
Fortune favors the bold. This is what I'm hearing. Fortune favors the bold. I feel like spirit is trying to encourage your person to connect with their boldness, to connect with their ability to turn fate um, in a better direction. Actually, I, would, I shouldn't say it like that. I'm being told I should say the ability to change their direction in order to align with better fortune. <laughs> okay. okay, then. <laughs> so yeah that's what I'm getting like a steering is what I'm feeling um the ability to steer themselves towards a more abundant concept of themselves to a better fortune to a a, a turning of the wheel because I feel like both of you are on the precipice of a new cycle is what I'm feeling and the way that you approach this precipice is and, and the new cycle, I feel, is a lot to do with what has happened in the last quarter of the last cycle. <laughs> For both of you is what I'm getting here. There's a lot of mirroring this energy. It wouldn't surprise me at all if this is a twin flame or a soulmate. A lot of mirroring or there's a, there's a lot of similarity between you and this person uh, in terms of maybe the way you see the world or maybe the way you deal in the world or maybe even your like spiritual concepts or your concepts of the destiny or fate or fortune um the star is at the bottom is a like a, so beautiful this is one of my favorite cards of all time look at it it's just magnificent <laughs> the star is incredible anyway but wow wow toth tarot deck um this is intense healing i feel like the next cycle will be about healing for both of you and it'll be about elevation, um, becoming uh, okay, to be more comfortable with your visibility is what I'm getting. I feel like sometimes this energy does come up for me, but I feel like there's been an, an imbalance between visible, invisible here in your energy, both of your energies. There may be some calling um, in relationship to um some kind of destiny or like a rising to meet your destiny is what i'm getting in relationship to your spiritual capacity or your 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 visibility so some of you may be in a visible position or that's going to be an aspect of the next cycle where you have to be comfortable with your own visibility in the world there's some healing of trying to be invisible or trying to keep a low profile or yeah i'm getting my guide is saying yeah put the head above the parapet and you get shot at so i feel like for both of you there's a sensation of being maybe in your childhood or in the past or something whereby if you made yourself too visible or too obvious or you you offered too much of your own opinion you got gunned down or attacked or yes so you learn to be very good at being invisible is what I'm getting but then because the calling has some kind of semblance of needing to be visible there is often an imbalance that can happen whereby you might push to be too visible at times or or it's the complete opposite and you don't put yourself forward enough so there's a lot of anxiety around the visible or, or being visible uh, to the public or to a wider audience or in terms of your healing or your elevating or your, your transformation in terms of your spiritual self. It's about stepping out and being who you are and being unapologetic, being unashamed, allowing yourself to align, align. The Wheel of Fortune, um, really interesting card, represents the four cardinal or four cardinal points in the fixed zodiac signs. So uh, one particular star in each of those signs that was used as a measuring tool for navigation. And it was called, um, I can't remember what they called it now, but it was like the fixed points of the heavens. So it made like a symmetrical cross on the zodiac plane so people knew where they were this is about orientation this is about getting yourself orientated and coming into full alignment with that healing process i feel like you've done a lot of the healing i feel like your person is is kind of being sort of forced to change or transform towards this um, because there is some kind of cord connection between you so 
as you progress, so the other person progresses and vice versa. There is a shared um, spiritual knowledge, uh, spiritual wisdom between the two of you, whether you're in contact with each other or not. So each part of your spiritual learning is shared or gifted to the other. So cool. That's what I'm getting. It's like an unbreakable uh, bond. It doesn't have to be a burden. Um, it can be a very much a, an, a sort of assimilation of each other's spiritual progression. Um, which is really cool because you cover more ground um, if you're open to some kind of symbiotic sharing of spiritual energy. Um, so this is, I feel like for you, that's that's an open energy to towards this person's higher self. <laughs> Not their lower self is what I'm getting because I feel like they're capable of like a huge amount of betrayal or lying or really messy endings or not wanting to bring conclusion to things. And I feel like you've had to bring a conclusion in this energy. The moon. There's strong intuition here between the two of you. Look at those two figures on either side. Connected by this understanding. Connected by... This deep spiritual space, this this long term situation, I feel like the, this is a soulmate connection where the karma has had to be worked on, it's had to be cleared in this lifetime by concluding or ending or completing a cycle of connection or in the 3D with this person. The connection will continue to exist. The connection will continue to become intuitive. You may well become aligned again is what I'm hearing. If you vibrate at the same frequency, if the work is done on the shadow uh, and particularly on the fear, fear factors, the monsters, the monsters in the cupboard is what I'm getting or like, yeah, I'm getting. So what I'm getting is like uh, childhood energy here. I'm hearing from the age of six to 14 14 6 to 14 i feel like there may be a, have been a lot of anxiety or fear or um mirroring issues with this person um around that period of life and and that's what i'm getting that needs to be confronted or is being worked on it feels very subconscious it's very deep the universe is at the bottom that's the world card another gloriously beautiful card um, and yeah, it has to be completed. It's completing um, a particular part of the shadow self journey is what I'm getting. I'm hearing the words Inanna. For me, that goddess is the one that rises from the underworld. She goes down into the underworld. It's quite a brutal story. I think she's like has her skin stripped seven times or something. <laughs> really but she she emerges as a new self um so i feel like this journey has been hard it has been really difficult um i feel like that's been mirrored actually um even though you might not think it i feel it's definitely a mirroring uh, it may be that your person is a little bit behind you in the journey um but i feel i have the opportunity to to give themselves like a sense of closure um, and actually you give yourself a sense of closure that is that is far less messy than this nonsense here like this is a, a sort of closed unclosed horror um, that keeps going round in a cycle of, of feeling betrayed or feeling that you're uh, it, that, yeah and being made an enemy it's like your person made an enemy of you and they didn't, they, like there was a partnership or something and then there was an unexpected, absolutely out of the blue, left of center betrayal. And it was full on, full on is what I'm getting. And, and this is a way of drawing like true conclusion in alignment with the intuition, in alignment with the work on the shadow self. It feels really interesting dealing with failure at the bottom of the deck. Look at the owls in here. That for me is the passage to the underworld, the totem of the underworld or the dark night of the soul because they can see so clearly in the dark, bringing wisdom and again associated with the high priestess, so elevating the third eye, elevating the psychic capability here. Yeah, uh, renewing strength, renewing energy is what I'm getting. It feels like a very... Uh, this is like a painful, painful gift from the universe, this, this relationship, because the elevation 
and the sense of determination in order to give up is what I'm feeling to kind of say I'm not going to be the one that holds the store open that like puts my full body weight against it that keeps hold of the burden of keeping something open to somebody who's unwilling to put any level of openness energetically back into the situation or just unwilling to meet in the middle, unwilling to meet in the middle. It's like a one-way um, situation here and I feel like you're forced to end this situation. Yeah, forced to draw a conclusion from this energy. And even though it's put you in touch with like dark forces, dark night of the soul, dark emotional content, betrayal is one of the worst dark emotions that you can encounter because it, it, it incorporates so many other emotions. So I'm just going to pick one more. Prince of Discs. So you are moving towards developing something, putting your roots down. It may be early doors. That's okay is what I'm getting. Um, you're building on something here and there is progression. There's wheels in this and there is a bull leading it. A strong Taurus energy coming through. But I'm feeling that that it's it's moving forward. You're moving forward at a steady pace here. And you know that you're not fully established or that there's going to be more work up ahead or that you're young in the game or there's some kind of energy here that is aware that there is journeying up ahead, aware that there is a level of needing to maintain a certain pace and you don't have to go fast and you're being encouraged not to by spirit, the hermit. Yeah, the introspection is required at the, um, with the hermit here. And that's how you make the progress. You keep connecting with the inner self. You see the inner light. And look how it shines in this card. So fabulous again. Fabulous. Absolutely love it. For me, this has got strong like paternal connotations, this particular hermit. We've got the sperm coming up here, showing for me that it's like the sacred masculine. And because of the maturity of this card, it always gives me like fatherhood or like the father god energy is strong masculine energy actually in both of these cards for me and that that's a sense of like reflecting on the inner masculine or withdrawing from the inner masculine to uh, not withdrawing from it but kind of it's a quiet inner masculine energy, that's what I'm getting. A quiet inner masculine, a quiet exploration of the masculine self, whether you're male or female. This is about connecting with the doing energy, connecting with the progressive energy. It's about consistency, it's about regularity, it could be about routine as well. All of these things are stabilizing factors that I feel could help you in the next cycle because this is a big cycle. I think that's all I've got for you and I really hope it resonated. And if it did, please like, subscribe and share and lovely to connect with you. Bye guys. Mwah. Hello, my darlings. For you that chose the wild with tarot here. There you go. I do like this deck. I am grinning from ear to ear. I am grinning and I can't help it because this energy... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like your person grins when they think of you. I feel like they just smile. They can't help it. It's so super cute. <laughs> this is super cute. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, spirits now showing me bush babies, which usually translates into, oh my God, so cute. <laughs> oh, and baby Yoda. <laughs> Baby Yoda. Yes, thank you, spirit. Now, I know yeah, Grogo. Yes, Grogo. Not Baby Yoda, but Grogo. And if you haven't seen The Mandalorian, what are you doing? <laughs> what? Go and watch it immediately. It's amazing. Um, yeah, this is so cute. This is so cute, this energy. You, you give this person an immediate elevation of spirit when they think of you. They, this person... I'm seeing Gene Kelly now. Oh my God, he was such an amazing dancer. Almost like being in love. My God, your person is very in love with you. <laughs> very in love with you. It feels giggly. It feels like butterflies. I can literally feel the butterflies. I might just sit in this feeling for a moment. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> It's amazing. 
your person is like so into you. They're so into you, and I, it just makes me want to giggle a lot. <laughs> and then there's a card flying out, right? Oh my god, the Ten of Stones home. Look at that tree. So magnificent. I feel like that they, they want you are home to this person. They want a home with you. They want a family, maybe. They want the stability they want the solid ground they want the ancestral energy that this is so lovely <laughs> i feel like there's an ancient connection for me this is an ancient connection that this person their very soul recognizes it their very soul sees it and it kind of sings sings with the concept of it it feels right I'm getting that you and this person might be very different. I've got the I've got the um, two of stones challenge at the bottom, and that's really interesting because I feel like you, although there's a huge amount of simpatico, and it, there is, you might come at things from like completely different angles. You'd probably come to the same conclusion, but I feel like you might approach things from a very different from very different perspectives or modes of thinking. Yeah, I'm seeing like left brain, right brain kind of energy. So somebody might be very rational, very scientific, very process driven. And the other person might be very creative, very kind of left of center, very results driven. There, there's this kind of flavor that is very, there's very different energy here and it might lead to and I feel it leads to spark though. I feel it does. And I feel it leads to, it is challenging, but it's usually, it's usually the same perspective reached by both different types of thinking. And that's how you know that you've got um, a really good basis um, for like, for really being a great companion and that there's, there's equal matching here. There's equal matching. It feels really lovely. This person feels, does somebody here bite their lip? Somebody bites their lip. That could be you, that could be them. Somebody bites their lip when they think about the other person. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's, it's so cute. Right. This person wants long-term energy. This person wants long-term relationship is what I'm getting. Yeah, this person, there's, a, there's so much love here. You make this person feel giddy. Giddy. And a bit klutzy, maybe. <laughs> this is proper cute. All oh, the forest lovers. See? See? This person loves you. There's no two ways around it. And again, with the hand at the hand wrapping ceremony here, and that's the that's the Celtic. Or, um, I don't know if it's Celtic. I think it probably is Celtic uh, slash pagan tradition of marriage, right? Marriage. And I feel like this person does want something like that with you. I feel like they want a home. They want the marriage. They want the traditional setup. But there's, and they want to make a choice with you on those things and they would like for you to make a choice with them for the same things. Um, if this is early doors in this relationship, then this is the potential I'm getting from, from this space. There's a recognition here. For me, it's a very ancient past life recognition that's going on here. There's a natural a natural dancing energy with Jean Kelly up here. There's a natural celebratory space. There's a natural recognition from both parties. I feel like there will be marriage here. I just feel that very strongly. Yeah, or there will be some level of ritual commitment. If and it's not marriage, it could be a pagan or like alternative style ceremony is what I'm feeling but it will mean the same it will or more <laughs> right it have a strong energetic with it yeah it feels very nice at the bottom of the deck we've got the three of bows fulfillment and this energy of somebody coming to greet or welcoming or 
it feels very warm. It feels very, um, I don't know, lucky. There's some kind of um, divine providence at work here. I'm so excited by this reading because it's so rare that you come across this kind of frequency, but it's so romantic. <laughs> it's so romantic. Oh my God. And it's so lovely. This is like a, a strange meeting or like a, a fates encounter my, is kind of meeting on the crossroads and there's an instant recognition is what I'm getting. An instant recognition. Yeah. From your person. <clears throat> That's what Spirit's saying. <clears throat> Maybe not from you. That's what I'm getting. That's what I'm getting from your person. There's an instant recognition. So maybe you're not recognizing this. So let's have a look. There may be some anxiety here. Maybe there's strong anxiety. I'm seeing the Nine of Swords. I know that Spirit hasn't brought that out, but I am seeing it. And I'm feeling that that's that you could overthink a situation or somebody's, or maybe both of you have the tendency to overthink. This is sort of not the kind of relationship that you can think your way into understanding because this is a strong soul connection there's a strong recognition there's a strong to to work too much with the rational in this relationship i think would really bring about conflict potentially or really bring about like um arguing over minutiae or a Getting caught up in details is is what I'm feeling to say. So just watch watch out for that. Don't get caught up in details or in intellectual debate is what I'm feeling to say as well here. It this is an energy of strong alignment from the heart, from the third eye, from the soul. Um, and the only thing that could like knock it off track is a sort of rebelliously, a rebellious mind. That's what I'm getting, rebellious mind. <laughs> Weird. Okay, four of vessels, boredom. <clears throat> Maybe there's been a sense of stagnancy here. I feel like that is the case. Maybe for you. Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, so how to clear my throat chakra. Something about expression going on here. The four of vessels, boredom. I feel like that's actually mainly maybe your energy. Maybe you were in this energy when this when you met this person is what I'm feeling to say. It feels like a quite a not much going on. It feels like crickets. <laughs> like nothing's happening. Um is the sensation here of feeling of just being a bit stuck, a bit kind of grey, a bit kind it feels monotonous, is what I'm feeling to say. Yeah, a sense of monotony. And then underneath that we've got the six of vessels which is reunion which again is like soul connection energy and look at it isn't it stunning stunning card and then under that the ace of vessels right a new beginning emotionally so it's like a complete replenishment but i feel like there is some still some kind of confusion around whether about your options, about maybe what options or what road that you should take emotionally. And that feels like, because your person does not feel like they're confused. Your person feels like they're completely giddy for you. And it's super cute. Um, but I feel like for you, there is this sense of maybe recognition of fulfillment and a new beginning but i feel like it's it's you've come from a space where there there was a sense of depression or gloom or maybe it's like fished you out of some kind of slough or uh, some kind of difficult emotional space in meeting with this person in communing with this person in connecting here it may be clearing up confusion. That's also what I'm getting. Maybe you have been in a space where you've been feeling unsure about your options or unsure or just kind of fed up about that or fed up about the lack of it maybe or fed, fed just fed up in general, I'm feeling. Um, and then suddenly it, it gives me a whole different kind of refreshing 
energy coming in with the six and the ace and all water cards like strong water energy going on for me in this reading yeah so pisces cancer scorpio energy very powerful here and we've also got gemini and earth energy as well coming up in the rest of these cards Two of Vessels, Attraction. Seriously. <laughs> this is so romantic, this energy. And then the Woodward at the bottom of the deck. The masculine frequency here feels very attracted. And uh, whoever, whoever is standing in the masculine energy feels very attracted. Um, if you're standing in the feminine energy, I feel like you're unsure. I feel like there's a sense of being unsure or being clouded or a little bit like worried about being caught up in fantasy or there's a strong sense of sort of stagnation and it's to do with, I'm hearing Neptune, to do with Neptune energy. <laughs> That's unusual. I do not expect that to come through. Um, but it makes sense, right? Okay, so it's that watery dreamlike element. Yeah, okay. And the wood, wood, it feels very much like a sense of wanting to come forward, wanting to claim ground, wanting to claim you. If you're standing in the feminine energy, the masculine wants to claim here. If you're standing in the masculine energy, you want to claim this, this feminine. But there's this sense maybe that this feminine is confused by her own, oh, I don't know, romance or dream space, or maybe she's like come a cropper before is what I'm getting here um, in terms of like deluding herself of something or feeling like she was like easily pulled into a situation. It does, the, the masculine energy feels very sincere is what I wanna say here. Very forthright, very straightforward is the energy that I'm getting. Strongly respectful of the feminine energy that's coming through. Very strong, strong, but stands very, very much and very comfortably in masculine frequency. This person may want to um, go out on a date or they want to meet maybe a neutral turf. Um, it feels like it could be early. Otherwise, I feel like you know this person and it's a very long-term gig here and I'm like... You already have traveled through all of this, is what I'm feeling to say, if that's this, the case with you. But I feel like a strong attraction. Strong and mutually felt. So let's get a bit more about that sort of slight disruption here in the feminine energy. <clears throat> What's going on with this, the confusion that I'm getting or the Neptune energy? The mirror. Okay, we've got, again, a watery energetic here. I feel like there's some regret over some kind of past situation. It feels like carrying the burden of a past situation here. It feels like a heavy knowledge is also what I'm getting. Yeah, I know, I see it with this card. I, I'm hearing the rhyme of the ancient mariner. It's like a very painful experience that needs to be kind of told or, or, or articulated or again, possibly that was why I was having issues with the throat chakra, something about expression of some, some kind of heaviness that has gone down before or difficulty or like a burden on the soul, like a weight upon the soul that needs to be brought into the light is what I'm getting. I feel like the feminine is holding something close to her heart or has not expressed something something deep or intuitive or that felt very sorrowful or there is there's a, a hidden sorrow maybe um here that needs to be brought to the surface is what i'm hearing to the surface because it caused a lot of reflection or yeah it's caused a lot of reflection 
and connection with the spiritual is what I'm getting and connection maybe even with the magical uh, realms is also what I'm feeling here too. Strong water energy, again, strong. Hearing Scorpio in particular for this. Um, I'm feeling like... It feels like a lament. I do not know why I feel the need to say that. Like a song. It, it feels like a song of mourning. There has been some kind of grief, deep grief, and that does bring this. This card has brought me this energy before. There's a boat in the background, and it seems to be carrying a body. There's a song, a, free, a, a frequency of mourning. It feels really eerie. It's so strange. I, I'm feeling that the feminine, the inner feminine, is in a more has a mourning full, a mourning energy. I don't. I'm gonna have to stop and think about this. Okay, so the inner feminine has been like deeply wounded in the past, is what I'm getting, and we've got the eight of vessels rebirth at the bottom. In having to walk away from something, in having to release on something, something cherished is what I'm getting. Something cherished, something, something mysterious, magical, uh, musical. Um, it's almost like an enforced loss is is what I'm getting it is the, the losing something that was deeply cherished this is an energy I feel that is hidden from the masculine or has not been shared or and it and it could be it doesn't have to be that one person is masculine or feminine like I say this is like sitting in the feminine energy so if this all applies to you as well take what resonates from the masculine and feminine frequencies here is what I'm getting. Yeah, some kind of strong and deep loss, but that has not been discussed or not been spoken about or not been brought to the light. And then we've got the four of, four of bows at the bottom celebration. I feel like this is a, a, a soul connection, a union of soul connection energy um, up here. And it feels like the masculine recognizes this frequency um, more powerfully in this space than the feminine does. It, yeah, and the masculine's excited by it. There, there's a spring in this energy. There's a bounce in this person's step. This is a really beautiful, lightweight. That doesn't mean it lacks depth. That's not what I'm saying. But I feel like there's this glorious movement energy associated with this masculine it's almost like you make if you're the feminine the feminine makes the masculine feel sexy is what i'm feeling to say like really sexy it more in their feminine energy almost so more in the kind of fluency of their movement is what i'm feeling to say here fluidity of their movement so again, that waterfall is coming through powerfully in this reading, but I feel like there's, and again, we've got dancing depicted here. It does feel very like poetry kind of, this person might move beautifully um, and you might have a very strong attraction to that. There's a, there's a sense of, and it's, it's being embraced more by the masculine energy than the feminine energy. It feels wounded, though, the feminine in general. It feels like it's been a wounded frequency, maybe for both of these people. But there is this sense of the masculine embracing more of that and helping the feminine in this frequency replenish or renew or rebirth her relationship with her feminine energy. It's lovely. It, it, I feel like this, the masculine can bring a lot to the feminine here in terms of reminding the feminine to celebrate their femininity. It's very, it, yes, it's a very kind of gender orientated reading. It's really interesting because I feel like, I feel like that's like the primary focus of this reading is the, is the balance between the masculine and feminine energy and the work being done on the inner masculine, inner feminine. So I feel like whether you're masculine or feminine, do work on the inner feminine here. 
do really embrace the the movement maybe the movement based energy here so maybe go dancing or maybe listen to music the strong musical tone coming through with that kind of siren song that would that but it feels beautiful beautiful and clear and true truly eerie truly magical um there's a very strong magical frequency with this wounded aspect of the feminine it's like powerfully magical yeah and it has a powerful effect if this a feminine um is in the wounded space because they th there's a reverberation there's a very there's a very powerful energy um associated here in the magic strong magical skill coming up here so whatever the frequency is sort of magnified is what i'm getting somebody might work with the moon very powerful moon energy coming through. Again, sacred feminine force coming through with all of these cups as well. So goddess frequency, goddess flavor. This is a really unusual reading. So god and goddess flavor. Again, the wildwood tarot though, it has that um, that pagan that pagan energy and here with the sacred masculine feminine, the depictions of the stag here. And we've got a horse as well. Yeah, which is interesting because a horse is a, the lead mare. You get a lead female in um, social groups with horses. So this is kind of depicting like leadership on both sides. Um, so there's a strong sense of mirroring between you and your person, like strong sense of mirroring the magical as well here. And this could be a very powerful combination um, of forces is what I'm picking up. King of Vessels, the eel. <laughs> I feel like the masculine is really attracted. <laughs> and also moves extremely well. There's this sense of like fluidity around the masculine energy here. It's very sexy. It's very sexy energy um, to, to have this kind of embracing of the feminine within that, within that sort of masculine frequency. This person, um, very adept is what I'm getting. Maybe very... Uh, yeah, I'm seeing like craftsmanship as well, or maybe musical. Again, it's something to do with hands and the fingers is what I'm getting. Like really very adept. <laughs> Moving on. Um, we've got six of stones, exploitation at the bottom. And again, I am feeling that maybe this is how you have felt if you're in the feminine in the past. And so there's a natural caution and natural wariness. I feel like it was, it, yeah, you've been through hardship. There's a sense of being through hardship or deep sorrow. And, but this massive frequency is very in the love, in the power of the love energy too. This is a masterful king. It's a king card. So, so somebody really, really has their emotions in check who really, but in a good way, like it, it's not like tucked within. It's basically open and warm but that they're not they don't they're not ruled by their emotions they rule their emotions and that may have been like their main challenge to kind of get to a position where they could handle their emotional content because i do feel like this masculine energy feels a lot could be a very strong intuition in this person's energetic too yeah ex exploitation feels more like your energy It's a very powerful card. It feels like strong hardship or real difficulty or having to ask for help or being really in need, um, feeling that things were burned or destroyed. or So there is this strong emotional content of you feeling, if you're in the feminine or the feminine energy feeling uh, that... There may not be where they they want to be for this person or that there could be distrust because they've been taken advantage of in the past, maybe a little bit overprotective, bit over defensive, bit bit wary. Feminine energy, do not miss out on this opportunity with this person would be my advice to you. Um, and that is all I feel to say. Your person is completely in love with you. 
and they do want long term with you and yeah don't don't think about it for too long uh, is what i'm feeling to say don't stay in any level of stagnation um i feel like you just need to express where you're at and why even if it's difficult to talk about Okay, really hope that resonated. And if it did, please like, subscribe, share, drop me a comment. It's so lovely to hear from you and take care. I'll, spe I'll see you, speak to you soon. <laughs> Bye, guys. Hi, guys. This is for you that chose the Angel Tarot. And I'm being told to shuffle in um, some reversals here, which I it's interesting because I don't usually read with reversals, but that's what I'm doing. I'm doing as I'm told. <laughs> So the energy, what I'm getting from your energy straight off the bat here is the spirit is showing me like a little cartoon figure going like this with a big question mark over their head. And I feel like you're baffled by your person. There's a sense of being bewildered by this person's behavior, maybe actions. Um, I feel like your person may have uh cut off something may have ended a situation they may have ghosted you they may have ended the relationship or they may have sabotaged the relationship before ending it or in order to end it as well there's an energy of that going on here it's very strange um this could be a friend or a family member or it could be a platonic energy for the last stack I was getting it's like pure romantic but this is could well be a platonic frequency or relate a, a relative or something like that for most of you I feel like this could be a romantic situation I feel like maybe there was commitment here at some stage yeah it feels like a partnership maybe it has a kind of solidity around it, a feeling of long-term energy. Yeah, the, I feel there's a sense of, like, bafflement or bewilderment. What I feel to say before I even talk about this card, what I feel to say is that there's an energy here of potential overthinking on your side of things because spirit is taking this um, question mark and putting it around your neck and being like, don't hang yourself with questions. Um, it, it, I feel like there's a lot of like wanting, wanting to know why. Yeah, I'm hearing stop asking why. I, it, and that gives me, an, it, that's a line from my I Ching book, stop asking why. Ah, oh, damn, I am going to have to go and find it. I'm clearly not done with my channel. Okay, so I found it, and it's hexagram number six in the I Ching. I will probably add a link um, below, because I feel like this has bearing, and I'm just going to skim here, because it's a lot that's said on each, um, each hexagram in this particular um, book, which is very, very well loved, right? This is an amazing, amazing book if you're interested in the I Ching as an oracle system or a divination system. It's amazing. Wondering why things are the way they are or what to do about them is in conflict with the creative. And creative was with a capital C in this book. It's basically God force or source energy. In trying to find comprehensive answers or in seeking the security of knowing, we distrust that the creative will show the way and will unravel the ambiguity of the situation at just the right time. And that's all I'm going to read because I feel like that is all I kind of needed to say on that situation. You have to give up the thinking about why in this space. I feel like your person has made this decision or taken this action not based in the thinking energy. This has been an emotional energy, I feel, in which this person has made this decision. And therefore, it's not strategic and it's not forethought about. There's no kind of planning in this space. I feel like it's... It was in the moment emotive um, and they have to work out the riddle of their emotional content as to why they may have behaved this way because I think questioning as to why they've done this too is not an answer for them either. It's the emotional, emotional acknowledgement of the space. 
So this is not a riddle that can be unwrapped with the thinking energy is what I'm getting here. It's, it, it yeah, that's just going to lead you down like into a labyrinthian headspace where you feel, and I'm seeing the Six of Swords now, so I'm feeling that sense of entrapment in the overthinking, in the in the feeling that you kind of can't get away from different concepts in your head. It's a self-persecutionary energy is what I'm getting. And it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be doing this to yourself. I don't think spirit would want you to do this to yourself. It wants you to see that when people make decisions with their emotional content, only the emotional perspective can grasp that space. And there is a, a kind of higher reason, I feel, here for this energy to have taken place. Yeah, it may be to get you to confront the thinking or the overthinking or the reliance on the rationale um, the, or the, the logic, Spock. <laughs> yeah, live long and prosper, my friends. But, you know, yeah, yeah, over-logicking. Seven of Wands. You know, I shuffled it back in again by accident and it came out. It was the same one. Seven of Wands in reverse. Yeah, there's a sense of feeling vulnerable is what I'm getting here. Feeling vulnerable or exposed to the elements in some kind of way because this person has removed themselves. I feel like your defences were down um, when this energy happened and that may have really knocked you is what I'm getting. I feel like, you know, you're now working on things that um, evoke your passion is what I'm feeling to say, or there is a sense of progression or forward momentum. Um, and I feel like maybe this was in the past for some of you that you're inquiring about something that happened a while ago. And that's not for all of you, but I feel like for some of you that ha that is the case here. Yeah, there was a sense of feeling uh, hit when down is what I'm getting. Um, or, yeah, a sense of wondering why that person did chose the timing that they did. They didn't do that consciously. It was an emotional decision. Um, it came from an emotional space. And I felt, I'm feeling spirit is showing like an overflowing energy here, like a pouring out of things. Um, in order to sort of unburden themselves of some like uh, emotional content that had been building or had built in them. Um, and that I feel like they've used this energy to uh, try and replenish. Uh, this may sound really harsh, but I feel that's uh, that's the the motivation here. And it may even be to try and replenish um what could work in the future and that that may be the case uh, is what i'm feeling for some of these people but for others i feel like this is kind of a, a conclusionary energy or that they had been emotionally building to this space for some time and i don't feel like necessarily it had anything to do with you and that and that may sound really perverse here but i feel like this person has behaved in in a very uh, in a way where their emotions have like over brimmed and if you were standing in the wake of that then you were just in the wrong place at the wrong time it is is my feeling um but it's still it, it's still not fair and it still doesn't have a rational explanation yeah i do feel like you've moved though i feel like you know you are reconnecting with your fire force with that page that was coming up there is the sense of that energy being rejuvenated or renewed or feeling the need to kind of progress onwards but don't look for answers um here or and i don't think even if you directly got to ask this person why they behaved the way they had they would have a logical explanation for you i think they might have had to bolt one over the top is what i'm getting um, in order to make their behaviour sound in any way plausible. But the, there's a sense here of 
don't bother um, listening to the bolted over explanation either because that will also make no sense um, to, to you because it was an emotional decision and this person may have lost their emotional shit at the time, proverbially, if that's the case. Um, there could have been direct sabotage um, here. Um, it, or, or just like you were the target at that, that day in that moment. That's really like, that sounds really rough, but I feel like that is the case. I feel like some of these people have not even acknowledged up until that moment maybe that there was an emotional issue with them. Um, and I feel like maybe there's something about your energy that releases this content potentially in others. And that's not head energy. That's not an energy that you will be able to understand and to think about it and think, oh, you know, is it me? Because that's sort of the logical progression or thinking is it unhealthy. Actually, it's not. You have this kind of what Spirit is saying here is that you have this capability of helping people unburden themselves of emotional content, even if you are not the issue or um, maybe they feel they have to make you the issue because it makes no sense. It You're just able to lift the lid on, on an energy here that um, is healthy for this person to release. Um, it can feel, and this could feel very unfair if this person has blamed you for this energetic, but it may be that they're just immature and they need to take time to understand why they've created this frequency or why there, there is a, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm getting here. Sudden um, is the feeling of this kind of emotional overload <laughs> or over brimming but you didn't put that content there. It's been building in this person for some time before it kind of got messy with you, is what I wanna say. Um, yeah, okay, sorry. Um, I was shuffling these cards. Um, yeah. So Seven of Cups, again, that sense of like, what the hell, like bafflement, bewilderment, emotional confusion. I don't feel like this person has really understood in any way um, a level of impact that this situation would have on you. They may be busy trying, some of them may be busy trying to make you a scapegoat for their own issues here. Others, I feel, know that it was a personal emotional content that they've got to work through and may be working on that. Um, in order to repair things potentially or hope for, they hope to repair things in the future. It depends when this situation happened because I feel like for some of them it happened a longer time ago than for others. If it's recent, I don't feel they've processed that. Um, I feel like they're busy blaming you, <laughs> maybe. Um, Again, it's. I feel it's got very little to do with you. Actually, you've just triggered. You've triggered something here. Um, is what I'm getting. Yeah, and it has led to a lot of confusion. And that you could be looking at this person and thinking, I have just no explanation for your behaviour or why you've cut me off or why you've ghosted or, um, I don't. I can't work it out in my mind. But this person, your person feels like if they've sabotaged this, then they have no good explanation and I feel like they're scapegoating. If they haven't sabotaged it and they've just exited, um, I feel like they know why they did it. Um, emotionally, they felt the need to do it. And I don't know why... I feel the need to say that, but I feel like if some of these people have sabotaged this situation, like actively emotion, emotionally lost it, blamed you for something is what I'm getting, blamed you for them losing it potentially, but this is not to do with you is, is what I'm feeling to say. And yes, it is unfair that you've been, I don't know, blamed, blamed, scapegoated, um, but you're not going to work out why because they don't know. They don't know why. It's not a why thing. It's not. Page of Swords. This person could have been very immature in their communication is what I'm getting. 
this person may be younger than you it doesn't have to be but there's a childish energy coming through here there's a an a twisting of words is what I'm getting or a mis uh, willfully misunderstanding I am hearing that for for some of these people like willfully misunderstanding this is very very bizarre it's almost like they it's almost like taking taking offense at something um, or trying to take offense at something that wasn't meant offensively and they know it wasn't meant offensively but it's trying to be provocative or trying to uh, you know make out you're attacking yeah it, it yeah that's the sense that I'm getting it's very strange this energetic Five, six, seven, eight. I have to count the Roman numerals. I'm really rubbish. So this is the Eight of Swords in reverse. And I was picking that up, right? You can release yourself. That's what I'm getting. You can release yourself from refusing to respond to the mind, refusing to respond to the mental energy that's telling you you're trapped in this situation, that you have to know, that you have to have answers, that you have to unravel the mystery or unravel the... Uh, the enigma in order to move on you don't have to know um, and you won't uh, and the mind you know doesn't function in the same way the emotions do you have to know how you feel about it spirit is saying that's the lesson here you have to know how you feel about it and be able to cut away from maybe the doubt or the self persecution that you could have you could have given yourself for this um, and recognize the entrapment of the mind and, and that feels like part and parcel of what this energy is here to teach you to recognize the entrapment of the mind to break free um, from other people's perception also is what I'm getting as well. And to be able to break free requires clarity. So we've got water energy and air energy coming up quite strongly in this situation. Um, so yeah, and I'm just... I just felt the need to look at what was under that, and that was the hermit. So this is about introspection as well. The labyrinth, of the inner labyrinth is what I'm being told. You know, where will your mind take you? How does it take you there? How does it make you confront your shadow when you're there? Um, how do you use this energy for your benefit? Um, when you see the lesson, you release yourself from the entrapment of particular modes of thinking or particular ways of seeing things. This is something about this emotional content that's expressed by this other person that insists on a broader emotional perspective of this situation and reconnection with the compassion energy, even if you feel that it was unfair, even if this person has made a scapegoat of you feel sorry for them that they don't feel strong enough to confront uh, a situation so we've got the nine of swords in reverse yes yeah, stop worrying that's what i'm getting stop worrying stop worrying about this turn over a new leaf the emperor that's very powerful energy out with the old and in with the new um it, it's like a change in regime a change in uh, you know maybe your security or your sense of security it's about claiming that energy it's about what you're going to build on for the future it's about the physical practical uh world coming in this is for me it's like strong 3d energy but in in the most impressive way in the, in the cultural aspect of it it's like claiming your culture or claiming your creed i don't know why i feel the need to say that but i do so let's look at your person's energetic here so we've got the knight of wands in reverse so they're not taking action and they have no intention to is what i'm getting um, yeah, they're not taking action. They've called judgment on this situation. And they, have to, they are consciously choosing not to make a move here. Yeah, they've come to some kind of conclusion here, whether you agree with that or you, whether you don't or whether it is fair or not. Like, I feel that they have just called judgment. They've called time on it. And it's, for some of them, it's because... They hope for a better tomorrow or they hope for a better future where things can be 
resurrected in a different space or when you've become different people I feel that for some of them that they do want that going forward or some point in the future they would like to readdress the situation but for some of them they just don't know why they're still deny in denial of the emotional content belonging in their space or belonging in their camp they've got emotional work to do this person if they're fe if they're like that and that these are the people that will have sabotaged it or emotionally manipulated the situation as well and they could have colluded with others as well as what i'm getting in that energy but um again you kind of have to rise above it because this person it like you have unlocked this emotional content in them and it's very spiritual they don't know why uh, i think they don't know why but they know you're kind of you had something to do with it it's very powerful it's a very strong energy it's very kind of god given or like god has given it it's very sacred it's because there's a clarity around your space a clarity around your energy that has this ability And for those who kind of have chosen to close it down because they feel like emotionally they were drawn to it is the right thing to do. They've done it because they've made some kind of judgment call on you. Um, and maybe they feel that you weren't faithful. Or you can flip this energy if it applies to you. But I feel like that could be the case here or that they they had the, or that there was a loss of sexual spark or a loss of desire. That could be the case as well. But there was somebody maybe was just not moving or not moving forward or just not taking action in ways that were positive. When the Knight of Wands is reversed to me, I feel like it can be very, A, very overblown machoism, a very egocentric energy, a very kind of um, sexual, overly like player player energy as well here and and this could be you maybe you call judgment here but i feel like for most of you you've been ghosted by this person or maybe there's been an unfair judgment again i am getting that for some of you this could have been a um partner so this could have been somebody that you were married to or at least in a commitment with and that's what i was picking up at the beginning yeah, we've got justice at the bottom of the deck here. So for me, this is all about like possibly a karmic situation, a karmic connection with this person. I feel like that's quite strong for a lot of you here. I feel like this is about redressing a balance, a coming to a balance of mind as well. A sense of impartiality accompanies this card for me because you have to be in that space of impartiality in order to make the right judgment call. And I feel like this may be a challenge um, here with this emotional content. One of you, I feel like you are too much in the overthinking space and that justice can bring this real clarity of mind and this sense of also judging what's fair for you, what's fair to you, what's fair, what's not fair in this situation and governing your boundaries accordingly is what I'm feeling the need to say with that. Um, and I feel like this person has this concept of what is fair and not fair and it may just disagree with yours or maybe there's just joint lessons um, here. It could even be a divorce situation for a, a couple of you. It could have even been somebody that you were married to and then there was a divorce. Or maybe you're going through that for some of you. Um, it's about redressing the balance um, in this situation and about staying clear of reacting to the emotional content but acknowledging how you're feeling and letting that guide you. Um, not stepping too out of that space. Don't be overly rational here. Like Go according to your gut instinct and going according to your intuition. If you're getting intuitive hunches about why this person has done what they've done or why they're behaving this way or why they're being it like why they're ghosting or it's it, you are right in your hunching is what what i'm feeling to say there's strong intuition and spirit is getting you to move out of the headspace and into the intuitive heart of things here oh, too many 
too many that I threw on the floor. Actually, there's three here, so why not just take these? Okay. Um, seven of Wands. Seven of Wands in reverse. That's come out before. This is about the sense of vulnerability that I feel uh, is going on here. Five, six, seven, eight of Cups. Yeah, and, and there's some kind of... Um, uh, there's some kind of pullback to walking away. There's some kind of um, desire not to release on this is what I'm feeling to say. But again, the emotional content, it needs to be sort of spilled out. Um, there could be some grieving necessary in this situation or at least a kind of allowing the emotional content to to become tears if necessary is what I'm hearing. Letting your defenses down in a space where you feel safe to release is also what I'm getting. Yeah, something here that felt very sacred or that was very, or that was treasured to you has not been, it, it seems like the other person doesn't feel that it's treasured. For some of them, they do. And they're, they're giving you the best possible chance for the future is what I'm getting. But for some of them, and the, for some of them who sabotaged it, they, they don't. They, they're just, yeah, they, they felt the need to walk away when your defenses were down. I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm feeling they need to say here. And they could have done it under uh, like false pretenses because we've got the ace of um, swords in reverse. Others, I feel like they don't, they feel like you don't want to see the truth. That's what I'm getting from that situation or that they feel that you might have been deceptive or that you just haven't been clear cut with them. Um, yeah, and that's possibly led to a lot of confusion. Um, I feel like you are the one that's confused, though, in this. But you can, I feel the, the need to say it with this reading, that you can take what resonates and flipping this energy if required. But yeah, I, I am feeling that, that this is a kind of a no-moving situation at the moment is what I feel the need to say on this. I'm not sure I've got anything else to add. I'll look at the bottom card. The lovers, so for some of you, this is definitely a love situation. But I feel like, yeah, there could have been somebody that could have chosen someone else here. Or that there was a choice that was made that was an affair. Or, yeah, somebody was maybe not faithful is what I'm picking up from that energy. And, and therefore... It's kind of closed down the situation. It could be that this person ghosted you before you ended it. That could be a situation going on here. But <laughs> there is a sense of bafflement and confusion about this. But I hope that in some way that brought some kind of clarity to the situation. And if it did, please let me know. And um, like and share. And yeah, it's lovely to read for you. And I will read for you again soon. Thanks, guys. Bye. Hello to those of you that chose the Divine Legacy. Uh, I think it's called the, the the Legacy of the Divine. Sorry. <laughs> I love this deck. I only read with this deck for like 10 years. And that's how much I loved this deck. I was completely... It was like the, Raid, the Rider White, which I learned on like pretty much everybody. And then this deck. And that was it. Um, so this is a really weird weeding <laughs> is what I want to say. Uh, I'm going to kick off by saying this could be quite strange. Um... Partly, but okay, so my guide is up in here, which usually means that there's something like unusual or unexpected or new to me. Um, and what I'm getting is, what he's telling me is that for some of these people, they're actually passed over. So there's an energy stream here um, from an, a deceased loved one is what I'm getting um, for some of you. And that feels the need to come in and say some, say stuff. <laughs> Um, and for others, I feel like there is a person here and it feels very romantic. This is what I'm feeling to say. Um, it doesn't have to be, but I am getting that strongly. I'm getting that strongly. So that's the way I'm going to kind of view it. I'm going to view it through that lens. This person, I'm seeing the three of wands straight off the bat. So this person 
is looking for a window of opportunity in which the stars align. I'm getting like star frequency. It feels like nighttime. I feel like I'm looking at three of wands that is looking out on a night sky here. It feels I'm hearing like destiny um that's coming through i feel like this person feels that it was a destiny or it is destined that your paths will cross again we will we our paths will cross again for some of these people they're saying i love you and i will see you in my next life that's what i'm getting sounds so strange but that's what i'm getting for those that have passed on yeah yeah that's really nice. See you in your next life. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. It's really beautiful. Um, for others, I feel that somebody is looking for a window of opportunity to, and they're trying to read the spiritual messages here. They're trying to, they're, they're waiting for a sign is what I'm getting. They're waiting for a sign from spirit. I'm hearing the phrase, it is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. Shake, that, that's a Shakespeare phrase, that's Shakespeare. So I feel, yeah, there's this classical energy coming through with this person. There's this classical kind of destiny, kind of, kind of Romeo and Juliet type vibe that's coming through with this as well. But it, it's kind of... Um, and I feel that this could have been a tragic love affair. Uh, for those of, for some of these people who have passed on, I feel like this was a lover or this was somebody you loved a, a lot. There was, yeah. And I feel like that quote is something that they're saying here. And if that person is not passed over, which for a lot of you, they won't be. I feel like they're acknowledging um the governance required to meet with destiny. Um, it, it's it's not on the higher forces to to do the moving and shaking or decision making for us. It is on ourselves. So it's in ourselves that we hold our destinies. It's not the stars that hold our destiny. But we choose to meet those higher forces by following an energy within us that is... Um, aligning with that space so it's almost like you have to meet spirit in the middle you have to fight touch spirit in the neutral zone you have to make the effort but you also have to have the faith that spirit will step into that zone with you as well there's it requires action or it requires creative energy to meet in the middle from both sides um, so I feel like somebody here is waiting for a moment or an opportunity or some kind of spiritual sign or alignment and I'm seeing the sky again I feel like this person's looking for a sign in the sky like or it, yeah, it may even be like some kind of spiritual signal from the heavens or the sky or <laughs> or maybe they're into astrology or astronomy or or this is kind of a heavenly energy if this person's passed over that is what they're suggesting um that there's some kind of alignment it's the right time uh, that is what i'm getting yeah there's some kind of divine timing uh, being hoped for or waited on here because i feel like somebody wants to bring truth or bring clarity or bring clear communication into a situation with you here and I feel like for some of you you may have given up on expecting a clear communication or expecting um, this energy to come through um, but it feels like it wants to uh, it feels very much like somebody here wants to bring truth or bring clarity and it could be about stuff that was hidden from view or that was sneaky or deceptive or behind the scenes or yeah somebody could be wanting to bring like the truth to a situation that was that had deception or sneakiness attached to it and if so spirit yeah i feel like i'm hearing the word bravery i'm feeling like that would that would be a courageous energy of this person to to claim it would be difficult but it would be very courageous it's 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 going to bring they want to bring peace to this situation because they do i've been given like tarot cards already I'm seeing the Ace of uh, Swords next to the Six of Swords here. So I feel like there's a clarity wanting to come in um, to a, a space of peace or a moving away from past turbulence or trouble or maybe conflict. 
but it's concerning because when the six and the ace are together that's concerning a seven of swords situation which is something deceptive something hidden from view something behind the scenes now for the person that's passed over maybe it's just that there was <sighs> It could be the same. <laughs> yeah, okay, I had to think about that, but it could be the same. It could be that they want to bring clarity or it could be to do with fear. It could be uh, to do with kind of assisting you in overcoming fear or a sense of just feeling that there were pieces missing from the equation. Of It was some kind of riddle or puzzle that you couldn't work out or that was just very difficult, very difficult, confronted you with like, inner turbulence or fear or wariness or suspicion or all of these different energies that have come through um, and a lot of transition and not really having answers. So this person wants to bring clarity, whether they're bringing it in the physical or whether they're bringing you the message through from beyond, they want to bring you clarity. So what does your person want to say to you? Uh-huh. Eight of coins. They want to work on something here. They want to level up. The eight of coins for me is always about leveling up. It may be leveling up financially. It may be leveling up in the physical. As in, it may be a physical house move or a job move, a relocation. But it could be like a leveling. It's about taking themselves more seriously. Uh, it also about becoming independent on a fiscal or or solid level this person wants to take themselves more seriously this person wants to see themselves in in transitional terms in mo in having in completing something that levels them up in the physical yeah and, and the nine of cups at the bottom and there's a wish there's a desire to work on things to work on things in order to elevate the situation, in order to bring stability into a situation here. They're willing to put in the legwork is what I'm getting with this. And you may not see this. This may be hidden from view at this point with the moon at the bottom. I've got to think about this in terms of the person that has passed over. I feel like they want you to do this, okay? I feel like this is a message to say, if you're considering changing job, if you're considering moving house, there is something that maybe you, you really want. This is the time to make that move. This is the time to take that to take that decision. This is the time to see yourself in serious terms, maybe in a different professional capacity. But taking yourself seriously, understanding your value, understanding your worth. If you're considering independence in terms of maybe your own business, this is a really good omen. Because I feel like it's aligning. That's what I'm getting. And your person is stepping in to say, okay, now. Now is the time that you can get to move forward or they're coming in to say I want to work on this that you are what I want you are what I wish for you you may not see this you may have your back turned things may be quiet between the two of you is what I'm getting or there may have been a lot of confusion here or a lot of fear or a lot of wondering and like I say I feel like some of you may have given up in this situation or had to deal with a lot of kind of shady energy is what I'm getting or secrets or gaslighting even. I am feeling that. I think for some of you, you've dealt with somebody who was gaslighting. And you may well have turned your back on this situation because it was emotionally screwing with you is what I'm getting. But this person feels like they have brought a new sense of clear-cut truth into their situation. And they do want to move to a place of peace with you. I think that you would be mistrustful of this person. And I can understand why, because that Seven of Swords frequency is kind of lurking. I feel like... They do sincerely want to level this up, though, and maybe even make it official here with a piece of paper. Yeah, they're willing to put in the legwork, but this is 
it's going to take courage, like Spirit says. It's going to take some some very straight talking, some honesty um, that may risk you not wanting to deal with them is what I'm getting. But I, I feel like if you turned your back, they've got nothing to lose, this person. Um, because I don't feel like you trust them anyway, or I feel like things have gone dark or quiet is what I'm getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that that I'm seeing? Okay, I'm seeing another card from another deck entirely. Just let me think about this. Okay, so it's an I Ching hexagram called Darkening of the Light. I feel like you've gone dark. I feel like you've had to kind of darken your brightness or your your shininess. I don't know, maybe you've kind of drawn a veil over the situation or there is just... I think you want to just leave the riddles in the past or the, it feels very convoluted or, or very much like, yeah, I just don't, yeah, I just don't feel you trust this person if it's a person coming back. Uh, if this person is somebody who's passed over, that's not necessarily the energy that I'm getting. I feel like this person... You haven't felt like they've come through or communicated. Maybe you've been looking for some time for some kind of communication from this person. This person is like around now and they're saying, hello, hello, I'm here now. Or it was kind of eclipsed before. It was kind of not in that space. But now I want to let you know that I'm here and that I'm encouraging you to make this move or take this level up or change something in the physical here or take yourself more seriously or recognize your professional capability or all of these anything to do with the earth energy is what i'm getting with that it's very encouraging energy um if it's a loved one that's passed on it's very encouraging energy and there's so much love oh so much so much so much love and they appreciate things were not clear um, things were, were hidden that it was really uncomfortable um, to deal with the loss maybe of this person very very difficult because there's some kind of destiny or destined energy around this or tragedy I want to say star-crossed lovers again that sort of classical Shakespearean element coming through maybe this person loves classics maybe they have that energy in their nature maybe literature or theatre is a part and parcel of this individual oh there's one oh, there's on the floor i'm gonna take it three of swords previous heartbreak heart heart heartbreak knight of cups yeah broken hearted because of a romantic situation or left feeling broken hearted by the loss of a romantic situation that could be as well uh, and it could be young as well this energy or it was just jumping into something different and then it was cut off it feels very harsh uh, it, the way if, if this person has uh, has died young uh, that that could be the energy here it feels really difficult really really difficult but this person is coming through to say even if you've looked at me in the past, now is the time that I'm coming through. And I'm really sorry that you had to go through this turbulence. I'm really so sorry about this energy. I was very emotional. That's what I'm getting. I was very, very emotional. And I was I was in a heartbroken energy. Um, that's what they're saying. Like, I'm sorry I was, I was heartbroken. And that maybe, like... It, there's something to do with like a, a a lot of emotional content here that is a sort of uncontainable or overflowing or yeah it feels like like sudden outpouring of grief as well if you lost this person suddenly they're really sorry um i think for the people coming back it could be in a third party situation i feel like they could have been like multiple wooing or this person was very charming or this person like knew what to say it was like came across as like a don juan kind of romantic kind of an energy is what's coming through with that like very emotionally manipulative that gaslighting frequency coming through as well here this person wants a second chance and they're prepared to be honest if they're prepared to be honest and own this behavior then there could be potential here for things 
repairing is what I'm feeling need to say, but it's going to take tremendous courage, even though this person is looking for signs from the heavens and they're looking for a window of opportunity to jump into offering a truth and bringing this to a situation where there is peace brought here or but they are really significantly worried that like they it's it's not going to go anywhere or that you've already departed or that you know you've given yourself peace and therefore there's nothing they can bring in this situation because you leaving this situation um or seeing the truth here or recognizing the need to cut away in order to give yourself like calmer waters has put this person in a space of fear potentially and but unless they're prepared to own up to some kind of deceptive energy or some kind of manipulative energy i feel like there's no point in them coming forward unless they're bringing the truth with them that's what spirit is saying unless they're bringing the truth The Ace of Cups and the Knight of Wands. So there is there is strong desire. There's a strong emotional desire, emotional content. And that's coming through from both energetic streams here. So if this person's passed over, there's a strong sense of wanting for you to feel them in the physical. I feel like this person is going is like a there's maybe a new sense of their physicality, their energetic being nearby you or being around you, or maybe you feel this here and there when this person can come in because I feel like they can come, there can be a strong energy of them coming in and then maybe they're just not there anymore because the night does tend to come in and go out. So I feel like maybe this person comes around you when you need it and you need motivation or a fire up your ass or some kind of like inspirational driving force and they're coming they're going go on then come on then like this is there's somebody cheering you on or cheering from your from the sidelines and saying yes and i'm seeing a horse like jumping here so i feel like this is coming up to some kind of again elevation elevating yourself or jumping to a high level a higher platform in the physical this strong physical energy coming through here yeah and this is like a really capable rider is what i'm feeling like somebody this person coming through is like yes you can you've got this you can jump this hurdle you can get to this level this it's really it's really great this energy is very encouraging very motivational very much like whoop 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 <laughs> in your camp um which is awesome it's hugely supportive hugely supportive um very bold, very confident energy and it wants you to feel that kind of confidence, feel that encouragement and the support that they're offering you here. Yeah, there could be strong horse energy just with the knight of coins underneath. Maybe horses are a connective factor here. It doesn't have to be, but I'm feeling strong that strongly in the physical. Like so whether the, if this person's passed over or if this person is somebody you're dealing with, they're very physical energy. Um I feel like the person coming back has or wanting to come back to your space. Whether they do or don't, I don't know because it's going to require tremendous courage. But there, there is a desire to, and they are looking out for like a sign. Um, but I feel like they want a new emotion. They're, they're really strongly desiring a new emotional beginning with you. And there is strong, strong physical attraction that this person has towards you. The night, though, it's still a bit immature, isn't it? You want a king. And there's two knights here, so it's kind of clarifying the fact that a king or a queen, like, you want the royal family, you do not, or the empress or the emperor, like, the optimum, but you do not want the in the immaturity that can come with this this is very macho energy for me the night uh, it's it's very it can be very strong um very strong yang force like quite pushy quite self-serving quite attention seeking quite sexual yeah 
they have a, a renewed sexual attraction towards you maybe here um, but they're going to need to put in some significant legwork <laughs> to do some work and to take things steady 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 so whether it, they may feel like this uh, like the knight of wands <clears throat> and you could be dealing with a fire sign here you don't have to be but you could be or an earth sign here as well but what i'm feeling is that there's this desire to drive forward to at speed or to jump in and it and to take control of a situation or to sweep you off your feet one of those two like happens so fast they won't even notice <laughs> they're already thrown onto the back of the horse and i'm galloping away it's that kind of feeling when in fact what needs to happen is a steady step-by-step -step progressive process and this person may need to confront the fact that they don't have the patience or that they are not very consistent um, or that they are easily moved by other parts of their anatomy. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there, there, there needs to be um, legwork is what I'm feeling. It would take effort over a period of time for you to not be suspicious or yeah this person i just don't feel that level of trust for you for those of you who are dealing with somebody in the physical like i just don't feel it for those of you dealing with somebody who's passed over i think there is a level of trust even if you might not have seen the entirety of the situation they were like sorry about the way things went down or i am getting that but um there's strong support and strong love here and strong confidence this person's cocky and very entertaining with that <laughs> could be a masculine energy here as well if not i feel like a feminine who's very like comfortable in the in the active energy is very physical uh, and that feels a lot of fun as well like i'm getting quite small if it's a female i'm getting like a quite a small small and mighty <laughs> kind of a person i love people like this <laughs> reminds me of a friend of mine immediately and it like takes up a whole amount of auric room but is like pocket sized uh, and absolutely yeah this is a really like larger than life kind of frequency and there's the ace of swords this is a really fundamental card to this reading truth and clarity cutting away from either fears or paranoia is what I'm getting. And for, for those of you that maybe have lost somebody, but I or cutting through deception that they may well be responsible for in order to bring a, a new sense of clarity or offer up, yeah, offer up some transparency with the sun at the bottom. Really offer up some transparency here. I feel like you're defended from this with the seven of wands. It'd be very defensive about allowing this person anywhere near into the sacred sanctum um i feel you you know you are you are keeping safe something that is lit from within something that is very sacred within yourself and I feel that like you'd be very wary about allowing this person to come in to as close intimate zone with you. Um, they're going to have to really wow you with the truth is what I'm feeling the need to say because I feel like you'd be waiting like a human lie detector. <laughs> That's what I'm getting. I'm waiting like a human lie detector don't even go there because i i can i can see it i can see if there's a falsehood here even one teeny tiny falsehood i feel like you're kind of prepared for this person to be deceptive and although interestingly i i do feel like the person that wants to come in here your person is kind of is actually not in that energy although they may appreciate that they were i mean and if they don't appreciate that they were there's no point in them coming in they probably won't garner the courage to do so anyway um is what i'm feeling the need to say there there is a desire to rush in though and again it could be driven by sexual frequency sexual energy or attraction towards your space um but i feel like it's something more on the emotional level and it's some kind of yeah, it's a very strong, they see the emotional potential between the two of you is what I'm feeling the need to say. They do, and they do want an, a new emotional beginning in this situation. 
for those of you that you're dealing with somebody who's passed over, this person is wanting to tell you that they're proud of you and that they love you and that they recognize your skill sets is what I'm feeling the need to say. And they really are encouraging you towards thinking very positively in terms of your success in the physical, in terms of your ability maybe to make money or to level up or to have your own business or to be independent is, is what I'm getting. Like an independent frequency is coming through with that, which is really lovely. Yeah, it, it's it, it, they're really, really cheering you on here. And... This person is small and mighty if they're feminine. If they're masculine, I don't feel like they're so small at all. I feel like they might have dwarfed you. <laughs> the, it feels like a much more sort of in the physical, probably very good at sports, very athletic is what I'm getting here. Yeah, very athletic is what's coming through. Very attractive is also what's coming through. Very sexy, very charismatic, very lovely lovely person really big hearted they're at peace is what they want to say with the four of swords here there is peace here so if you've always if you've wondered this person is at peace and they want you to be at peace that's lovely and they're there and they're gifting to you and they they you might receive a gift in the physical this is directly from this person they want you to know if you receive a gift in the physical, uh, they're, they're saying this is coming via this person, via this past over energy to you. Um, they're offering some kind of gift or inheritance or support or leg up or help or opportunity and it's coming in the physical. So be ready. The three of, the three of ones is for you. And you can take this energy even if you're dealing with somebody in in the physical who's not passed over, you can still claim this energy if if you'd like to, so get on it, like claim it is what, because I feel like for you, there has been a sense of like finding peace within yourself and replenishing and giving to yourself in terms of calm or quiet or ease or demanding uh, return or reciprocity as well, uh, very significant here. Demanding to be valued, that's also an energy that I feel is coming through with this. And being very clear about what you need in terms of give and take, I feel like um, you will not deal with, with the situations that do not give to you. And that's good, good nor should you. Anyway, I think that's all I've got for you. So I've got the two different energy streams, a bit complicated this one. I really hope it resonated. And if it did, um, please drop me a comment and lovely to engage with you and like and subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Mwah.